All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be solving another mensuration question for you guys. And this is from May, June 2013, paper two, variant two. All right, so let's get started. So it says a cylindrical tank of height 46 centimeter and radius r centimeter has a capacity of 70 liters. So if I were you, I'd underline the word capacity, 70 liters, find the radius correct to the nearest centimeter. So in simple terms, you're given the volume and you're asked, and you're given the height of a cylinder and you're asked to find the radius. But the catch is that the volume is given to you in liters. So uh, this shouldn't be a problem to be honest because you should know how to convert liters to centimeter cube. So you should remember that one liter is equals to a thousand centimeter cube, which basically means that 70 liters is gonna be equal to 70,000 centimeter cube. All right, so that's pretty straightforward so far. So volume of a cylinder is pi r square h, all right? Something you should also know. So this is equal to 70,000, so pi, r square height is 46 is equals to 70,000 grab your calculators and r square is going to be equal to 70,000 divided by 46 pi and also remember that you have to give your answer correct to the nearest centimeter according to the question so 70,000 divided by 46 times pi so i'm looking at 484.3 something let's find out the square root of it so r is equals to 22.0087 so on and so forth which means that correct to the nearest centimeter it's going to be 22 centimeter so there you go not too difficult to be honest okay now we're at part b which says a triangular prism has length 20 centimeter the sides of the shaded cross section are 4 centimeter 11 centimeter and x the angle between the sides of length 4 and 11 is 125 degrees all right we can see that Calculate the area of the shaded cross section. Okay, so we have we have a triangle. We need to find its area. We have two sides and an included angle. So this shouldn't be too hard. Half AB sine C is the formula that I'm gonna use because like I said, you have two sides and an included angle. So I have a video on this. You guys can go check it out. You, you should check it out if this is something that you're not familiar with. So yeah, because uh, usually you'll find questions of mensuration mixed up with uh, further trigonometry. So yeah, very important. So area is equals to 18.02. So I'm going to log this at 18.0, which is the correct answer. Okay. Volume of the prism. Yeah. I was hoping, uh, we, uh, this is going to be the next part. So basically you have a prism. So volume of prism, the formula that I always prefer is to, I mean, the form formula that I prefer to use is area of cross section, area of cross section, times length. Now a lot of students tend to confuse that uh, normally it's base area times height, how come it's area of cross section times length. So this makes things a lot easier because you have the cross section. So that's right over here, the one that I'm shading in blue. Length is basically how far apart or how much the perpendicular distance is between the two identical faces, which in this case happens to be 20. So pretty simple. We have the area Okay, that's 18.0, but uh, yeah, 18.0, sorry, multiplied by 20. So there you go. So 36, 360, which is the correct answer. This falls inside the acceptable range, just by the way. Okay, next part is calculate X. So for that, again, we have to use trigonometry for the trigonometry to be precise. So you have two sides and included angle, you need to find the third side. So you gotta use cosine rule, no brainer. Okay, so. So here's what we'll do. X squared is equals to 11 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 into 11 times 4 times cos 125. Uh, next thing you should do is X. So make sure that you guys reset your calculator because if you are an AdMath student, it's likely, or even if you're not an AdMath student, sometimes it just randomly happens that your calculator goes into a different mode. Uh, so get into the habit of resetting your calculator before solving uh, any, b before attempting a math paper, basically. So yeah, uh, x square, I'm looking at x squares, so that's 187.47 something. In order to get my hands of x, I need to take the square root of the answer. So I get 13.69, which I'm gonna lock at 13.7. So there you go, x is 13.7. Now comes uh, the surface area of the prism. Now, the formula that I'm gonna use is as follows. The total surface area of a prism is equals to twice into area of cross section, okay? 
plus the perimeter of cross section, which in this case is going to be the perimeter of triangle multiplied by the length of the prism. Okay, so this takes into account the two faces that you have, the two identical faces. Okay, and then when you multiply the perimeter by the length, what happens is that uh, this takes into account all the three or four, depending on the prism faces that you, remaining faces that you have. So the total surface area is equals to two into, if I remember correctly, 18 was the area of cross section. So yeah, 18.0 plus the perimeter. Now, if you want to, if you want the perimeter, so all you got to do is four plus 11 plus 13.7, right? 13.7 is the length that we just figured out, the third length, multiplied by the length, which if I remember correctly is 20. Yep, it is. So there you go. Let's sum this up. See what do we get? So two times 18.2 is 36 plus, let's work this out, four plus 11 plus 13.7 times 20. So that's 574. Let's add 36 to it, so 610, which falls inside the acceptable range. So total surface area is equals to 610 centimeters squared. And there you go. With this, we are done with another mensuration question. So let me know what you guys think about this whole thing, me picking out difficult questions of mensuration and solving them for you guys. If you think it's helpful, I'm going to continue. If you think I should do something else, do let me know. So yeah, that's all for this video. See you guys in the next one. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.